Shalom. Call Haloi Haobashim Shai by Hashem Rakakwadash. Double honors unto the apostles and elders. Salutations to all my fellow laborers doing this work in truth and sincerity, risking their lives and their freedom to do so now more so than ever. To the scattered elect among the heathen nations around the four corners of the earth that be like unto the speckled bird. To the Yaquaf that are listening and learning to you, I say Shalom. This is your brother Malcolm from the branch of the Great Millstone here in Chicago coming at you with another lesson. Um, and without any further ado, let's just jump right into it. Post-traumatic slave syndrome is an explanatory theory that really looks at multi-generational trauma. What you see, they gave you her credentials. She's, uh, according to Esau, here we go. Let's go back a little bit. Right there. Dr. Joy De, uh, DeGroy. Um, she's a clinical psychiatrist, social work, and, and social work research. Which means she's highly, highly qualified to speak in the field that she's talking about. Dealing with post-traumatic uh, uh, situations where from natural things, you know, where there's really nothing natural, something that happens with the weather, the Lord controlled it, war and that whole sort of thing. So if there was the, the most horrific, inhumane treatment of any group of people in the history of mankind, all right, you know, uh, anti-Israelite, you know, stuff that was done to the slaves, you know, these people, you know, that's what you're going to start calling it, man. They got their ante, so, you know, we should have our ante. So anti-Israelite, anti-slave uh, um, ism should be addressed because that's what this is. All right. This is anti-slavism being ignored and not being addressed. One of the things that's difficult for people is their first response is, oh my God, that happened so long ago. We're talking about people being... That happened so long ago. This is Ecclesiastes 3 and 15. And it reads, That which has been is now, and that which is, which is, which is to be have already been, and God requireth that which is past. So, just because, you know, E and the heathens have lived lavishly off of what they did, because this action did make America great. It did make America the most powerful and wealthiest nation on the earth, Britain and other nations right along with it. But mainly America. They were able to get ahead of everyone financially and become the, the uh, financial power of the, of the modern world today. As a direct result of this action. Not to mention that most of these people created the, um, the inventions that are used regularly in America. Even though they don't get the credit for it. But I have a, a book with the patents and the original people who did it to prove it. You know, for anyone who wants to come with their Darwinism bullshit. All right. Let me check something real quick before I move on. Yeah. This is uh, Ecclesiastes 1 and 9. And it reads, The thing that have been is that which shall be, and that which is done is that which shall be done, and there is no thing, new thing under the earth. So there's nothing really new, including slavery. All right? The Israelites were in slavery in the, in the ancient world, and the relics prove it, even though somehow, even though all the relics show you people that look like the people on the screen, somehow the, the, the victims of anti-this and anti-that, somehow, you know, uh, get the credit for being the oppressed and being the Israelites when these people right here on the screen the uh, the perpetrators the owners of the slave ships 
that carried them into slavery, which is the documentation and the evidence of it and the records of it, it's all over the internet. It's fingerprint is everywhere. Are the same people who play victim villain today. All right, the same people who set up laws about anti this and anti that. Okay? Captured, shipped, sold, beaten, raped, experimented on, and then. Wait, you know what? Let's take that back just a tad and really let that ferment, you know? Beaten, raped, and experimented on. Really want you to, you know, the Tuskegee experiment when they purposely put drugs, uh, I, I mean, uh, uh, gave syphilis to, to Judite men and then let them go among the population. You know, they, they shot gonorrhea into the spinal cords of, uh, of the spinal columns of, uh, of Guatemalans, you know, Northern Kingdom people. They shot gonorrhea and herpes into the Puerto Ricans. So, you know, Ephraimite, the so-called Puerto Ricans. They purposely gave them cancer. All these things have been have been proven. All right. Because uh, even a couple past presidents made, I think it was uh, Clinton who made a, uh, a public apology to the people of South America, of Guatemala, for those experiments. You know, so these people have set up a system. Oh, not to mention uh, gynecology was developed by doing painful experiments on, on these women, the very women that you see before you. Without anesthesia, by the way. You know, they would sit them up, strap them down, crap their legs open, you know, put giant dildos and all kind of other instruments into them to do research to figure out, you know, the, the science of gynecology. All right, so, as it said, you know, these people want to play victim villain and like they've done nothing wrong. Not understanding that the very book that they use, because this is a so-called Christian nation, all from the beginning of the Bible to the end, it talks about recompense and payment. And they've never they've never been recompensed nor given any payment for the things that they've done in the past. Experimented on. And then you have to ask the question, did the trauma continue? Yes. So 300 years of trauma, no help, freed. No help, more trauma. If it's a sustained trauma, then the, the impact of that is also sustained. When we look at multi-generational trauma, we're looking at people who are maybe victims of natural disasters and their families and their children and generations of folks who have experienced war. Uh, and we know that there are residual uh, mental, emotional, traumatic impact. And what I did was I started to look at the African-American experience, starting with slavery, as a real clear long enduring traumas. I started to see that there were clear connections between that survival behavior. So survival behavior, man, when the when the slave master could come up, uh, grab your woman by the hand and lead her over to the bushes and just raise her, her dress or her skirt and have his way. And there'd be nothing that you could do about it as a man. Take the children and sell them off. And as a man, you could, there was nothing you can do. And then if you were a man that was too manly and too, too strong, if they feared you, then they used their buck-breaking techniques. All right? Well, they bent you over a log before the other slaves. And the taskmasters would uh, proceed to gang rape you in your anus before all the people to belittle you, embarrass you, shame you, and show all the other slaves and the women that you as big and strong as you are, that you are weak and cannot defend yourself. What type of trauma, you know, what, what's the traumatic trauma scar that that leaves on the, the man that it happened to and all the people who witnessed it? And how is that trauma going to be passed on to their children? And contemporary living in African American experience. I started to see common behaviors that I took for granted as, well, cultural. There's adaptive behaviors, survival behaviors. Well, what are they? Let's just say 2019, you have a black mother and a white mother. The sons go to school together. 
they find themselves at a meeting. The black mother leans over to the white mother and says, I just wanted to mention to you that I noticed that your son is really doing quite well. And the white mother's response is, oh, thank you. She begins to go on and on about, he won the science fair, his uncle's an astronaut. She's just oozing. She realizes the black mother's son is actually excelling her son. And she says, well, wait a minute. Your son's the one that's really coming along. And the black mother responds, oh my God, he's a handful, but oh, he just works my nerves. Now, when I'm working with African-American people, it doesn't matter what the audience is. It doesn't matter what class. If I were to ask, is she very proud while she's saying those denigrating things? And everybody laughs and goes, of course, there's a secret. Because everybody black knows that even though the black mother is going, oh my God, she's really proud. So now let's roll that scene back 300 years. And let's say this black mother is working in the fields and a white slave owner comes through and says, wow, that boy is really coming along. What is she going to say? No, he's not. He's, he's stupid. He's, he's shiftless. He can't work because I don't want you to sell him. So, so she said, so I, I denigrate him to protect them is what she's going to say. But that's where the science part, you know, let's, let's hold on. Let's get this is off because that's a curse. All right. That's one of the curses. I do believe that that's in uh, Timothy, I think it says the science so-called not Timothy why I cannot remember that right now but um it's talking about their 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 science you know their 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 pseudoscience you know and, and it's false it's fake it's not true it's all based upon hypotheses which is basically is educated guesses because a lot of stuff she talked about even though it said hypotheses in the beginning a lot of these these events that she's talking about is factual they actually happen. Why is the scripture leaving me right now? But, you know, you can look it up and find it for yourself. You, you, you know, you know what I'm talking about. But it says that, you know, they, they believe in science, you know, false science, you know, so-called, basically. All right, because here, here's the answer to that. This is Deuteronomy 28 and 54. So that, so that the man that is tender among you and very delicate, his eyes shall be evil toward his brother, and toward the wife of his bosom, and toward the remnant of his children, which he shall leave, all right? And that it has happened, you know? A lot of, a lot of so-called uh, uh, Israelite men leave their families. That's part of the curses. Uh, verse 56 in Deuteronomy 28. The tender and delicate woman among you, which would not adventure to set the sole of her foot upon the ground for delicateness and tenderness, her eyes shall be evil toward her husband of her bosom and toward her son and toward her daughter. So you can't leave out what the Lord said, all right, about the curses that will fall upon Israel, all right? So I denigrate them to protect them. That is called appropriate adaptation when living in a hostile environment. The little white boy, say Timmy, you know, he feels really comfortable and happy about what his mom just said about him. And Trey looks at his mom and wonders, why can't you be proud of me? Because he doesn't understand the secret yet. And by the time he learns the secret, he will have already been injured by it. Post-traumatic slave syndrome. PTSD um, is a disorder that occurs as a result of a single trauma. You don't even have to be there to actually get a diagnosis of post-traumatic stress disorder. You could just hear about something horrific happening to someone you love. So you have people who have experienced it firsthand, people who have witnessed it in their environment, right? People who are continuing to be oppressed. That exacerbates any possibility of healing. So it's not post-traumatic stress disorder because then it becomes part of uh, what we call your socialization process. So you begin to normalize a way of living and being. Everything from what we eat to what we believe it means to be a friend. You know, all of these things are colored by history. And if you don't understand it, you're going to fold in things that you've just assumed are normal. 
But post-traumatic stress disorder, you know, exaggerated startle response, outbursts of anger, a uh, feeling of foreshortened future. There was a point where there were you know, African-American children in different urban settings that didn't expect to live to be adults because they saw so much death that they saw... Fact. Um, study had just been done, and you can check this out, FBI numbers too. The number one cause of death for so-called black men, young black men in America, is by law enforcement. So more than, than any disease, more than cigarettes kill people all day long every day, more than, than lung cancer, more than any, any disease, the number one death for these men, so that kills that black on black violence because of things that, that which is a lie. Because the thing that's killing black males the most is Edomite or so-called white law enforcement. Facts. That's their own numbers. Started planning their funerals like at 13, 12, as young as 10. It, when you start looking at the, the simple biology, you start looking at the, the impact of stress on health. And while we look at general stress, you know, we know finances, you have illnesses, all these different things. How about being black? How does factoring in being black in America impact your stress level and therefore your body's ability to operate its own immune system? Because we know it compromises the immune system. Once you understand it, then you can deal with it because you see it's habitual. You socialize. It becomes part of your being. So one of the ways you begin to address that multi-generational trauma is to work with the people it directly impacts, to hear from them. And when you give the people the information, it, they can use it. I think the first order of business is beginning to have a conversation. And the other is to educate the larger society. You have to stop the assault. And how do we educate them? We educate them by going out on the highways and byways, by doing these videos, as, as prophesied in the Bible that we would do so. This is uh, 2 Corinthians 10 and uh, the point is in 4 and 5, but I'm going to start in 3. For we walk, so this is 2 Corinthians 10 and 3. For we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. Alright, so we're not going, so the way that the, like the media has been portraying the black Hebrew Israelites, when you got all these Hispanic camps all over the, all over South America and all the different, across America, all right, uh, the, the speckled bird camps, you got all these so-called look, white looking guys that are doing the same thing. They're in the camps, all right? So it, this isn't a black thing. This is an Israelite thing. That's why the, I believe the title of this video will be Anti-Israelitism, all right? So, uh, uh, you know, they, uh, uh, they portray us as if we're so violent and, and all this other bull crap. And all we do is teach the Bible. Those, those groups that are marching around with and, 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 uh, and doing all this militant stuff, those are groups that are set up by Esau, by Esau Edom. Those groups have 510C3 charters and or contracts with, with the government. They're 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 agents, or what do you what do they call it? Uh, um, uh, agent provocateurs. That's exactly what they are. Cointel Pro. They're not set up by the Lord at all. What what I'm doing was authorized through through the Most High God, which you you know, which which is the God of the Bible. Yahweh Yahweh Shai. All right. This is Second Corinthians Second Corinthians ten and four. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. But mighty through God to pull down strong, the pulling down of strongholds, and we're pulling down the strongholds by by uh, unveiling the lies that that Esau Edom, the so-called white man, has propagated all over the world. Simply by just revealing the information that they've covered up, that they've tried to hide. And the crazy thing is that this information is uh, is probably about ninety. 99% their own sources. They just choose not to make these the, the, the recommended source of, of uh, if in their educational institutions. All right? Because this, this is a people who, who are, are unrighteously and unethically in the position that they're in and establish themselves. And the main way they did it was through lies and deceit.
And that's what the problem is. Is that we're revealing their lies and their deceit. And they do not like it. At all. Okay. Verse 5. Casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. And bring it into captivity. Every thought. To the obedience of Hamashiach. Alright. So all these false images. And their imaginations. Their changing of laws and times and dates. Changes of national. Changing of the. The, the, uh, the, the physical makeup. Of the Israelites. Into something completely that, that's not. Even though the relics and, and the history. Proves who are. They just tend to ignore it. And just make it what they want it to be. Alright. But their time is, is, is coming to an end. And as a nation and as a race and as a people, uh, they're going to pay. All right? And there's nothing that I can do about it, nothing that they can do about it. They can make 20,000 more prop propaganda videos, false flag events. It's not the end result is going to be the same. They are going down and they are going into slavery. All right? And they will be judged as a people. This is our wisdom of Solomon 12 and 12. For who will say, what hast thou done? Or who shall stand in thy judgment? Or who shall accuse thee for the nations that perish, whom thou hast made? Or who shall come and stand against thee to be revenged? revenged for the unrighteous men? So only the, the unrighteous men. The wicked, which is I've been identified as Esau, Edom, who is today the so-called white people. The Lord is going to, Obadiah is going to happen. All right. The book of Obadiah, which is there, which is their prophesied end and punishment, which is a thousand years of slavery because they have to do double the slavery that that the Israelites did. The so-called Latino, Native American and the Negro. All right. They have to do double. And then at the end of that slavery, after they build up the, the, uh, the, the kingdom for a thousand years for free, they get rounded up and they get exterminated off the face of the earth. That is what the Bible says. Not me. Call Yahweh Hashem Abashai, Bahashem Rakakwadash, Wa Ababa Shalom.